when you think about food, what was one of the earliest food staples that was geared toward television? It was the TV dinner. Overworked housewives can relax until dinner time. This is fantastic. It's food, it's TV. Here we go. I'm fed up and mush. Ain't you, Sparky? You said a mouthful. Everything's good for something on this plate. <laughs> I looked to American sitcoms to see what life was like in a typical American home. It smells wonderful. You can either come to the table and eat, or you can lie there and feed off your own fat. <laughs> Not at the dinner table. You know, as a Swede, you always thought about the Swedish chef at the Muppet Show. Boop, boop, boop. Now I'm like, that's not Swedish. Mm, I'm starving. What's for dinner? Leftover parfait. Ava Gabor. Worst cook ever. Food is our currency, it's our language. Ta -da! It was only a matter of time before food became a star on TV. This is Jeopardy! In 1946, he began hosting the first cooking program on television. Brian, who is James Beard? Today we're gonna make a greased pig salad. I remember watching a couple of Mr. Beard shows. It's Peppy. You bet it's Peppy. Mm -hmm. James Beard, who is often described accurately as the dean of American cooking. When I came to this country, I was a vegetarian. You've been eating sausage casings all your life, and you know what they actually are. They're made out of pig's guts. And one of the most startling things I saw was this big-boned American patrician woman going, Julia Child, and today we're going to make duck colorage and just hacking this duck. You just go whack to bits. And then, of course, there was Graham Kerr, who was the galloping gourmet. He often seemed to me a little tipsy. You take a spoon and you <laughs> And then, of course, later on came Jacques Pepin. As a professional chef, I may go a bit faster than you do with a knife. I think the four of them at different times really sort of broke the barrier. And then somewhere in the mid-90s, Food Network comes on. Let's go! The TV Food Network. The Food Network makes it pop rock and roll culture. And we went from a anonymous labor to not even a profession to becoming one of the hottest professions in the world. You can let your imagination go wild. This is Iron Chef America. Then this whole last 15 years of reality competition TV came into play. Food is something like live action sport. How much time? That was hard. So overwhelming. This theater, we fetishized it. The winner is. What's happened now in this evolution of 20 plus years with food television is that people are highly educated about food, about wine, about spirits, about shopping, about restaurants. How are you, Kyla? I'm fine, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. I think food television has been very instrumental in making us not only broad-minded, but just having broader palates. Even if you can't go to India or to Colombia or to Paris, you can still travel there with your fork. That's all for today. See you next time.